the last couple of years, including Denny Avgia. Steve, do you think it's a playoff team? Yes. I agree. Part of it's the East, but... Correct. As for Houston, mm. John Wall reunites with DeMarcus Cousins after they played together at Kentucky. Speaking of reunites, Westbrook gets back together with Scott Brooks, who was with in OKC. Be interesting to see how the game meshes with Harden, who became the first player since Michael Jordan to average 30 in three consecutive seasons. Adrian Wojnarowski, who blew up our rundown with his tweet about this news joins us now. My guy Jeff and all of his wizard buddy fans here in D.C. are bumming to see Wall, a perennial all-star, leave town. But Woj, he's a guy coming off an Achilles, and, and, you know, explosiveness was his calling card. What does Houston think they're getting in Wall? Well, they think they're getting a player who wants to be with the Rockets and who has shown in the months since... Uh, you know, has been working out this summer, uh, you know, that he's got some explosion back. Uh, he's expanded his game. He's shooting a three-pointer well uh, with all of this time off. Uh, but, listen, this was a trade of two players on two teams who wanted to go in the other direction. Russell Westbrook wanted to be in Washington, reunited with Scotty Brooks, play with Brad Beal. And John Wall wanted to play with, John, with uh, James Harden, wanted to go to Houston, and finally, they got that deal done uh, this afternoon. The two general managers hadn't talked in weeks. And Russell Westbrook's agent, Thad Fouché, really got them back, got them talking today. And then within a few hours, they had a deal. Well, as you know better than anybody, if the right deal comes along, anything can happen. But can we mostly assume that this means Harden remains in Houston for the time and Beal remains in Washington for the time? Yeah, our, our Tim McMahon was reporting today that that Houston stance has not changed. They expect to play through here with James Harden. They don't want to trade him. And they have, I think they have more of a cushion to work with than Washington does uh, because Beal's free agency comes up sooner. But the hope in Houston is that Wall can, you know, regain some of his old form, that those two can find a chemistry, and that James Harden, you know, starts to think again about wanting to stay longer term with the Rockets. Uh, but right now, they plan to certainly start the season with James Harden and John Wall as their backcourt. Adrian Wojnarowski, the best. As always, thank you. Hi on Raven Steelers currently going on. Naturally, on a, on a Wednesday evening. Welcome to Sports Center. Uh, we're going to begin, of course, with the NBA. Yeah, a new season is upon us. Surprise, surprise. The league's four time MVP yeah, has a new contract. It is a two year extension. So, big picture, here's exactly what it means. Let's start with the fact that LeBron James is now guaranteed to be in the purple and gold for the next three seasons. That is through the 2023 season, and it does not include a player option. So, good news for you, Lakers fans. His running mate, Anthony Davis, is still a free agent, but it's widely believed that he's just deciding on the length of his contract, and then he's expected to return to the Lakers. AD can receive a starting salary at 35% of the cap in two years, as opposed to just 30% this season. And don't forget that LeBron's son, Bronny, he's scheduled to graduate from high school in 2023. Yeah, that's the same year LeBron's new deal expires, so we'll see if he sticks around after this latest extension comes to an end. Now to dive deeper into the financial aspect of LeBron's entire new deal, here's what it looks like. He was already scheduled to make over $39 million this season, and the extension replaces the player option he had for next summer when he could have opted out and become a free agent. So when this ends, LeBron will be 38 years old, making almost $45 million in the last year of his new deal. As for the new season set to begin December 22nd, LeBron was asked about this season's team on Richard Jefferson's podcast. Can you all repeat? We can. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, we absolutely can. Like RJ said with the Nets, first of all, it all starts with health. Yeah. You have to you have to have some luck and you have to have health. If we can stay healthy, um, but we did get younger. And we grabbed the 27-year-old point guard, we got the 27-year-old six man of the year Warren Trez. Um, you know, we, we got IQ younger. With Mark. You know, we got Mark who's a defensive player of the year and his IQ playing against not only playing against him in the NBA, but also playing against him versus Spain uh, yeah, yeah, national team. Five. NBA insider Brian Windhorst is live now on SportsCenter with more on this extension, in particular, Brian, the timing of it. So why now? Why did LeBron agree to this extension today? Well, see, this is LeBron really for the first time acting like a guy who's about to turn 36 years old. He's always been aggressive and, and, uh, and flexible in his contracts as much as he possibly can be. As you mentioned, he could have been a free agent next year, but instead he is 
he is now under contract for as long as the NBA will allow him to be because there's a rule that you can't be signed for a multi-year deal past age 38. This takes him to age 38. And this is, you know, about insurance. It's about basketball mortality. It's about a guy who had a serious injury for the first time two years ago and wants to make sure that everything is locked down. I have to say that I was surprised by the timing of this. Yeah. But in talking to LeBron, uh, in, sorry, in talking to LeBron and the people around him, it is clear that he wants to make sure he's protected, and that's why this decision was made. Yeah, I get it. To, the, to your point, he's turning 36 at the end of this month, and he said on the podcast there that they did get younger this offseason. How about Anthony Davis? Still a free agent right now, but expected to stay with the Lakers. So how does LeBron's decision on this extension impact AD's negotiations, if at all? From what I am told, it is not impacted by at all, that Anthony Davis is on a different wavelength. Uh, the Lakers were not going to have flexibility for next summer anyway because LeBron was determined to extend. Now, Anthony Davis has looked at more than 12 different iterations of a contract that he can sign for the Lakers. Not just now, but he's also, I am told, looking at what his next contract would look like, whether it's smart to be a free agent in two years or in four years. This is more complicated than I think it maybe needs to be, but Anthony Davis is going over this very carefully, and he wants to protect himself when he's 32 as much as he does when he's 28. Can't blame him. Brian Windhorst with the very latest on what's happening right now in Los Angeles. Wendy, thank you. 40s coach, is that where we're at with you? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a very young coach. Let's go! Oh, see, we got cute there. We went with the breaking news. The, the man of the hour, LeBron James, has signed a four-year, $153 million deal with L.A. in 2018. Well, now he's got an extension that's going to keep him in L.A. through the 22-23 season, which, oh, by the way, would be his 20th NBA season. We now welcome in our NBA reporter, Dave McMenamin. Why do this now, Dave? Well, Nicole, this is following the playbook that LeBron James and his representative, Rich Paul, uh, implemented after winning the 2016 championship with the Cleveland Cavaliers. They wanted to show the loyalty and the commitment to staying in a program where they just won the ultimate prize. And so in that scenario, of course, he was going to be a free agent and signed a new deal. In this scenario, he's coming off the championship, already had, a year guaranteed this year on his deal. This adds another uh, guaranteed length of time that you'll see him in the purple and gold. Okay, so it's two years, $85 million. But the big question going into this free agency period was not LeBron. It was Anthony Davis. So what does all of this mean for AD? Well, certainly we've heard rumblings for weeks now that this would be the time where Anthony Davis would, you know, look to sign his extension in order to have that new deal to be a part of the Lakers, just like LeBron, with designs on repeating. And certainly, I think this gives us a major clue as to what Anthony Davis's contract situation will look like. You know, you're, you're probably going to see something in the neighborhood for Anthony Davis of either three years guaranteed or two years with a player option to line him up with LeBron James um, so they can both make mutual decisions uh, come the 22-23 season about either staying with the Lakers or, or finding.